Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Herculean Hearts. I'm Sarah, homeschool mama of six, and today we are continuing on with the Bookshark series where I'm giving you guys a little peek into the various levels of the language arts and readers. And for this video, it is level one. So we're gonna look at level one. I've already done level two advanced, and I will post that link to that video down below if you're interested in seeing that level. I know when I was first looking into Bookshark, it was really hard to know which level to start with when it came to the readers and language arts portion. So hopefully these videos will just help you get a brief look to see what the reader level is, what the language arts level is, so that you have a better idea of where to start your kid. So let's take a look at level one. Here is the big binder that I lovingly refer to as the beast. It is the perfect place to keep all of your instructor's guides. Um, it'll hold everything in there and so you could just stick them all in the three ring binders. So here is language arts with your readers for level one. They recommend this age six to eight. Um, so they do have age ranges on there instead of grades, which is super awesome. Uh, you can combine different kids so that you don't have to do a different level per kid. So for example, with all my kids, we are doing level two. We're finishing up level two this year. However, they're not all ready for the language, the level two when it comes to their language arts. And so we do our level two history together and science together, but then they get their own language arts program based on where they are. Um, so this is the instructor's guide. It comes loose leaf and it already comes hole punched. That way you can just go ahead and stick it in. And uh, the color for this is purple. So you'll notice on the readers, I went ahead and just put purple tape. That way uh, you, I know which readers go with which level. So I do that based off of this background color here. So I'm gonna show you the instructor's guide. Okay, so I just picked a random week. It looks like I picked week six, just flipped open to it. So if you're not familiar with the Bookshark schedule, it is a four day a week schedule and it leaves that day five open if you have co-op or music lessons or sports activities. I love that it has flexibility or sometimes maybe we just get behind with sickness or whatever. Um, and at that point, we use this as a catch-up day to make sure we get everything done in the week that we needed to. And y'all can see, I just check mark whenever we did it. Like, that's all I do. I literally check it, like, done. And I write the date at the top, which is awesome. If you're in a state that requires uh, that you do a certain amount of days per year, this is your evidence uh, that that is getting done and what you did. And it also has some open places down here if you need to put any notes or anything. You'll notice as we go through here that there's some optional activities. These are add-ons that you can get when you're ordering uh, from the Bookshark website. It will ask you if you would like to have include these or not. I include them because I think it's awesome to have that extra practice. It's really helped my kids. Uh, plus, it's already scheduled for me. And this level one does include your handwriting. It's a handwriting without tears, book one, and I will show that to y'all. So then you flip the page, and then you can see each day by day exactly what you will be doing. It even gives you the questions that you can be asking after you've read the book. So it has all four days, exactly what you need to do. And then at the end, back here, there is an activity sheet. So if y'all haven't seen my videos before, then you're like, well, where are the activity sheets? I will show you those now. What I do with my activity sheets, I don't leave them in the scheduled binder. Some people do, some people don't. That's totally up to you. You can take one sheet out each week. What I like to do is I take out all 36 at the same time, right before we even start the year. I create the, this cover and I laminate it. Um, this is obviously for my son, Josh, and uh, what he has been doing this year. So this is what the level one activity sheet for language arts looks like. So their first day, they always do some kind of copy work, no matter what day it is and the copy work always comes from the readers that they are reading from so I really appreciate that the readers that they're using corresponds to the language arts that they're doing and so that way they can see the principles that they are learning they can see that in action how it actually um, is used in literature this level one there's a lot of 
dictating. So the parent or older sibling or whoever uh, will do the actual writing while the child uh, comes up with the story or the poem or whatever it is for that week. So as you can see, each week it follows that same format. They do their copy work. There's uh, dictating that they'll do. And then they usually have to come up with their own story. In section three of your instructor's guides, or there's even a website that I will also link down below that shows the scope and sequence. So here's your scope and sequence for language arts one. The very beginning, they're gonna be starting with the at family, spelling those words, uh, being able to read them in their books, and then they're working on capitalization, matching initial letter sounds, and things like that. So if you have a really advanced reader, you might be like, well, they are way past this at family and reading, and that's fine, but are they way past capitalization? Or if we're moving down, you can see that we're then gonna be introducing plurals, um, articles, homophones, antonyms, um, so just because you may have a really advanced reader, this might be the right level for you just based off of their language arts abilities. So you want to base it more off of where they are with their language arts than compared to the reader. Otherwise, the language arts is going to be way too hard and you're going to be frustrated, they're going to be frustrated, and that's just never a good thing. So that's what you'll be doing by the end of the year. So in level one, there are 11 readers. These books are different from their read-alouds. The read-alouds are the books that you read out loud to your kids, and these readers are the ones that they will be reading completely on their own. You can see that I have the purple like washi tape down here. Um, I did that on all of their books to match the language arts uh, color. So this is not done by Bookshark. Your books will not come like this. That's just something I picked that tape up like Walmart or Hobby Lobby and just uh, color coded them myself. That way when they're on my bookshelf, I know exactly which books go with which level and make sure that we have all of them together. So this book you'll use every week. It's the I Can Read It Word List. Each week has a different lesson that you work on and this is your lesson for the whole week. And these are the words that you go over every day. And so you guys will just read them together. And so it starts at the very beginning, a very good place to start. So that first week we're doing the at family and so they're gonna be reading these words. This down here, uh, there's also sight words in your instructor's guide and so I added the sight words on here that way we can practice reading the main words for the week and then we can also practice reading the sight words. So that's what these handwriting those are just me and what we did in our family. And then in addition to the word list, you also have your uh, reader. This is the first book that you do. It's the I Can Read It series. It's just a bunch of short little stories that you can see go along with that first week, that first day. You'll be reading these a lot of at families, um, and there's a lot of pictures, big, nice big print. Oftentimes it's just one story to go along with the word list book. Uh, sometimes it's more than that. And then they just, they're really funny little stories. Like my son that was doing it, he thought that they were pretty funny, which was helpful when it came time for him to have to read. Because as you're learning to read, sometimes it's frustrating to have to read. <laughs> so um, this kept his attention. He liked all the pictures and that they were funny stories. I can read it, book two. And these stories are just a little longer. It's still the nice big type, still lots and lots of pictures, uh, but just a little more words on each page. Okay, you move to book three. So, and here, there's even more words on the page, and the pictures are a little smaller, but the stories are still really funny. They kind of go along together. You see a lot of the same characters throughout the books. And so you can see the reading level as it progresses. This is your next book, The Best Trick. So that same type, more words to a page, multiple stories in this one book, but they all go along together. After that, we move into the, the um, Dr. Seuss books. There's a couple of these, Green Eggs and Ham, Let's Put Me in the Zoo. So just your typical Dr. Seuss books or by the cat and the hat. 
fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. So we have a couple weeks where we're reading Dr. Seuss books. Ball of string. Last book for level one is The Step Into Reading, The Bravest Dog Ever, The True Story of Balto. This is a fan favorite. Um, I know everybody loves reading this book. It has a lot of good feedback. So that is the reading level. Another part of the language arts level one are the bingo cards. And it gives a couple of each of these bingo cards that you can, guys can play together. Uh, so it's just a lot of fun. These are just a couple examples so you can kind of see how that works. They also give you the little cover pieces um, so that you have everything included there with the bingo game that is in it is part of the instructor's guide. It'll have that as an optional activity to do the sight word bingo. Another optional thing that you can use with the level one language arts are these explode the code books. So I'll just show you quickly what is inside. We love explode the code. It really helps give a good foundation, writing, some matching. Then they look for this, the sounds find the matching words and they're starting to write and, and again this is already scheduled in your instructor's guide already for you it's usually two to three pages um, per day that that way they can get all three done here's book two so you can see it uses the same pattern but the words just get progressively harder as you go through and book three And the last thing that I'll show you all that is included in the language arts a level one program is the handwriting without tears um, you get this book and then it also gives you like some loose leaf paper that has these two little lines if you're familiar with the handwriting without tears curriculum it does not give you um, like the wood pieces uh, that is something that you'd have to get separately I haven't found that we really needed that and it doesn't it does not come with the teacher's manual either which again I don't feel like we really needed that at all so this is just great practice um, I like the way that handwriting without tears is set up typically you only do handwriting twice a week and it's usually just one page at a time sometimes two just depending on the week so that was just a basic overview of everything that is included with the level one language arts and readers. I did also show you those optional add-ons that you can get when you go on to order. You can say if you want those or not. Whether you get them or not, they are scheduled in your instructor's guide already for you. So that is a huge extra bonus that we just love. For those of you that don't know, I am a Bookshark convention rep, so yeah, I will be in... The Woodlands, Texas. I will also be in Ontario, California and Phoenix, Arizona for this 2019 convention year. If you're at any of those three conventions, please come to the Bookshark booth and say hi. I would love, love, love to meet you and chat with you, whether it's about Bookshark or homeschooling or just life in general. Uh, I would love to have a conversation with you. So stop by and see me. Uh, if you're not at any of those particular conventions, but you do go to a convention, be sure to stop by the Bookshark booth there as well. And let me know in the comments below if you're going to convention and which one you will be at. Anyway, but as a convention rep, one of the biggest questions that we get is, what level to start with because my child has such a high reading level uh, compared to their other skills. And that's kind of, in some ways, it's kind of a tricky place because if you look at this level one and you're like, Dr. Seuss books and at family words, like that was, my kid was doing that at two years old. So if that is you, where you look at the readers and you think, well, my kid would be bored with those or they were reading those a long time ago. Um, however, their language arts, maybe they are still working on capitalizing that first letter in a sentence and then adding punctuation at the end, learning what plurals are. So if the language arts looked good, but the readers just looked really simple, my suggestion is to start with where they're at in the language arts. 
So look at those scope and sequence and see at the different levels where the best fit for your kid is. Even if the reader itself is at a lower level than what your kid may be reading, we're still wanting them to understand those concepts that they're doing. So what I would suggest with that is either using the readers with the language arts where they are and then just supplementing books from the library that are at that higher level that would interest them to read for their like fun reading time or you let them read the read alouds to you instead of your reading to them so they have their readers that are part of their language arts section but then use the read alouds for them to read to you that way they're getting both they're getting the language arts level that they need but then they're also getting challenged with their reading and they all go together and so that is what I would suggest uh, for you to do if you have a really strong reader that's still needing some extra support and help in that language arts department please don't forget to give this video a like that really helps the channel um, and it helps us so that other people can find this video to help them in their decision of what bookshark level to be using don't forget to subscribe down below that way you can see how we are able to use bookshark for our family of eight and all the different levels that we have in store and all the fun that we have doing it. So until next time.